Hey gang, sorry I couldn't be here today, so I wanted to make sure that you guys got finished up on your notes. Yesterday we talked about total lunar eclipse and partial lunar eclipse. So just to kind of refresh our memory, the total lunar eclipse occurs when the moon is completely passes into the darkest part. So yesterday we talked about, or a few days ago, we talked about the darkest part being called the umbra of the Earth's shadow. The umbra is the darkest part. This only occurs during a full moon phase. When we have a partial lunar eclipse, this is when the moon passes into the lightest part of the Earth's shadow, the penumbra. So if we look at this diagram right here, this is our sun, the light source, and it's shining on the Earth. So what's happening is the Earth is casting a shadow on the moon causing it to have either a total solar eclipse or a partial solar eclipse, or I'm sorry, lunar eclipse. So when a light shines on an object, what's happening is this light's going to kind of deflect around, causing kind of this cone shape, which is why we get the darker shadow and the lighter shadow. A partial lunar eclipse only occurs um, at a full moon phase and at night. Now we're going to talk about the two terms umbra and penumbra. So in your notes I want you to write the heading umbra and then I'll tell you kind of the notes that I want you to include. In your notes I want you to write under umbra that it's the darkest part of a shadow. So again when we're looking at this diagram right here this is our light source. This is the sun. So when the sun is casting light onto either the earth or the moon, because it doesn't matter, the earth or the moon can have a shadow. And within that shadow, they're going to either have the darkest part, the umbra, or they're going to have the lightest part of the shadow, which is the penumbra. So the darkest part of the shadow is going to be this spot where the light isn't going to deflect around. So the only thing I want you to write in your notes for umbra is that it's the darkest part of a shadow. We're going to kind of explain this a little in a little bit more depth. So the cone-shaped region of a full shadow cast by Earth and the Moon during an eclipse. So this is the cone shape right here. If you look right here, there's your cone right here. That's the cone shape. Okay, so now we're going to talk about an umbra during a solar eclipse and then the umbra during a lunar eclipse. We're going to start out with the umbra during the solar eclipse. You don't need to write anything in your note, I just kind of want to explain and look at the diagram. When the umbra from the moon shadow touches Earth, you have a total solar eclipse. So again, here's our light source. Here's the sun. It's casting light onto the moon. The darkest part, the umbra, is going to cast a shadow on the Earth. So this is exactly what's going to happen to us August 21st when we experience a total solar eclipse. This region right here is going to experience a sol total solar eclipse because it is experiencing the darkest part of, Earth, of the moon's shadow. Okay? So this will follow a path. So again, right here, point C is an example of where you would experience a um, total solar eclipse. And we know it's a solar eclipse because the moon is in between the sun and the earth in the new moon position. Okay, so now we have an umbra during a lunar eclipse. So this time we have our source, our light source, our sun, is shining on the earth. So we know this is a lunar eclipse because the earth is in between. So the sun is shining on the earth. So the earth is actually going to cast a shadow onto the moon. But just like um, the solar eclipse, there's going to be a cone shape. Remember the light's hitting it and then it's going to kind of deflect off. So this part where I'm showing my mouse is actually the penumbra, the lighter shadow. This area, this region right here, is called the darker part, the 
the umbra. So in this position right here, you would get a complete total lunar eclipse because it's in the darkest shadow of the Earth, darkest part of the Earth's shadow. All right, now we're going to talk about a penumbra. So in your notes, I want you to put the heading penumbra. So we've talked about an umbra, the darkest part. So the opposite of an umbra is a penumbra. So I want you to write all of this underneath the heading penumbra. So a penumbra is the area of partial shadow surrounding the total shadow, the umbra cast by the earth or moon. So it's the area of partial. So what kind of helps me remember a penumbra is a partial shadow. P, partial, P, penumbra. So it's the area of partial shadow surrounding the total shadow, which is the umbra. So again, here we have our light source. It's shining onto um, either your earth or your moon, whatever the object is. This area where the light deflects off that lighter part is going to be your penumbra. Okay? It surrounds your umbra. Okay? So we're going to talk about a penumbra during a solar eclipse and a penumbra during a lunar. The first one we're going to talk about is the solar eclipse. We don't need to write anything this write any of this down. We're just going to kind of talk about it. So when the penumbra of the moon's shadow touches Earth, you have a partial solar eclipse. So here's our light source sun. It's hitting the moon. Okay, the moon is casting a shadow. The darkest part we already talked about. Now this area, the light blue, is that partial light. Okay, that's where the lightest area of the shadow is. So in this case, point B would be experiencing a partial. Alright, when the penumbra, we're going to talk about the lunar eclipse. Remember lunar meaning moon. So when the penumbra, again you don't need to write this down, we're just going to talk through it. When the penumbra of the Earth's shadow touches the moon, you have a partial penumbra lunar cycle. So, again, you have your light source, you're hitting your Earth, that lighter area, the part that surrounds your penumbra, any of that area, that light gray, is where you're going to have your partial lunar eclipse. Alright, so this should wrap up the notes. If you have any questions about what you specifically should have in there or the way it should look, you can always grab my science notebook and kind of make sure that you've got the, the tidbits that I'm really speaking. But basically, if you put what Mrs. Edmund asked you or said like this, you should be good for your notes for solar and lunar eclipses. When I get back to class, um, on Friday. If you have any questions, just let me know.